when you're working with a programming language, whether it's new, whether it's old to you, probably one of the first things that you're going to be doing from a cloud development perspective is trying to find maybe some sort of SDK or maybe some sort of API to work with. And then once you find that API to work with, how do you get the programming language to interact with that API? Well, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to see how Golang can interact with APIs and make API calls for get requests and posts and all of that. So let's jump over to VS Code and we'll see how we can make those API calls. Once you're in VS Code, you want to just create your new main package. So you run package main. And then what we can do is we can start doing our imports. So our imports are going to be a few things. One, we're going to need FMT because we're going to be printing out some output. Then we're going to need log because if we want to log any errors, for example, we're going to see a value where we can actually print out those errors if we want to using the fatal method. And then the actual API call itself, well, not the API call, but what do you use to make the API calls? That's going to be net HTTP. And then finally, we're going to use OS so we can pass in args or arguments or parameters at runtime. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to define my main function. And then within my main function, I'm actually not going to do anything just yet because I'm going to make a sub function. And that sub function is going to be called from the main function. Because Go is a procedural based language, typically that's what you're going to see where you're going to have a few different functions and those functions will be called from your main function, especially in like console applications and stuff. I'm going to make a function called API and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a parameter called URL. And I'm going to make that parameter a string for the type. And then I'm going to have a response here and the response is going to be response and error. So er is for error typically. And the reason why I can put two values here for the variable essentially is because when I use the HTTP package to get, aka that get API call, it's gonna want two values. And one of those values, of course, we can use for an error. So we're gonna define our variable here. We're gonna do HTTP get. And as you can see, I have some like IntelliSense here where it's just, finding the methods and all that. And if you want to be able to do that, all you have to do is simply install the Go library or the Go extension for VS Code, and then you'll be able to start doing that as well. So we're going to do get, and then get is going to be my URL. That's what I'm going to be passing in at runtime. And the reason why I want to pass it in at a runtime is because let's say you have other people that want to use this console application. You don't want to hard code those URL values because everybody might not might have a different URL that they want to do an API call against. So we have our values here. And then we're going to set up our error handling. So we're going to do if or aka we're calling this value here that's in the variable not equals nil. So if you're new to Go, nil is like none in other languages. It just means null essentially. And then we're going to do a log, which we're going to be calling this package here. And we're going to see a few different methods that are available, but we're going to use fatal. And then we're going to print out er. And then if that passes and we don't have any errors, we're going to do FMT, which we're going to be calling that FMT package. We're going to do print ln, and then we're going to return our response. So if error is null, it's going to pass. If it's not null, then it will return this error here for us. Now we're to our main function. So what our main function is going to do, it's going to do two things. It's going to give us the ability to pass in the OS arguments. And then it's also going to give us the ability to call that API function. So we're going to do URL equals OS, which calling the OS package here, args. And then we're going to do one here. So with args, it's not like, you know, standard indexing uh, or, you know, where computer numbers or computer language essentially starts at zero. So you have like zero, one, two, three, four, and zero is always where we would think of our one place to be. The OSRs actually start at one. And then we're going to pass in 
our new function and we're going to pass in our parameter. So this is going to be our program here that we're going to be running and you just zoom in a little bit here if you're on mobile. So I'm going to move down here and I'm going to move this up. Okay. So if I ls here, I'm going to cd out and I'm going to go to my main here and we can see our main program. So I'm going to type go run main and then oh actually it's going to yeah, want to do main.go. So once we run this, we can see that it actually returns an exit status of two. And the reason why is because we're not passing in any values at runtime. We're not passing in that URL. So we can see that error here that the index range, you know, it's out of range. It's saying, hey, you're supposed to put some value in here, which you have not done. All right. So now it's time to go run main.go and we'll do www.google.com. So we can see that there is an unsupported scheme. So what this means is it actually wants you to pass in like a standard HTTPS colon whack whack. It doesn't support just as is. So let's go ahead and do, we'll go up here and do HTTPS, right? And then we'll run that. And then as we can see, here's our output from that API call itself. So if you want to make API calls, you could definitely use this to test, pass in different URLs. You can see what happens for any type of get requests. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.